Welcome back. Let's find out if we got anything wrong so far. For that, we go to TV's Andy Levy. So, Andy, what have you got? Hey, so I guess Beck's off all week. Yep. Yeah, he's been having a lot of people fill in. Have you been called? <laughs> no, but then again, I lost my phone, so maybe they called. I, I didn't know. That's weird. I called you today, and you picked up. Anyway, they're having a lot of people try out. I would have thought they might have called you. Well, I'm sure they've got some very talented people, Andy. Oh, absolutely. I hear uh, Paulie Shore is doing Wednesday. Really? Yeah. Uh, I'm sure he'll be great. Yeah, and uh, Mario Van Peebles on Thursday. <laughs> Mario Van Peebles. Yeah, Van Peebles, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, Friday, Billy Zane should be a good one. Uh, Billy Zane? Great. Yeah. Big yeah. fan of Billy Zane. Yeah. Anyway, I'm sure you were next in line. Well, they probably assume I'm busy with Red Eye anyway. Yeah, I'm sure Red Eye takes precedence. You know, just get on with your halftime report. Yeah, okay. Uh, Trump says he'll run as an independent if he doesn't get the GOP nod. Tucker, I agree with you. To me, this whole thing comes across as a veiled threat to the GOP and to Republican voters. Yeah, maybe not so veiled since he yeah, <laughs> said that's it correctly. <laughs> that's a good point, actually. Uh, Lori, you said you love how straightforward Trump is, that he talks stuff on China, that he comes right out and says they have an unfair advantage, uh, and we should slap them with a 25% tariff. Really? Protectionism? Well, you got to get the currency even. I know I'm talking a little bit uh, technical here, getting into the weeds, but uh, China's had a cheap currency, and it's giving them this, right. this trade advantage. I know what currency so, is, Lori. No, I know, <laughs> but the, di the difference in the, the yuan versus I have a the dollar. Of, I have a couple of small currencies in my pocket. <laughs> I'm sure you do. That's what yeah. the Andy, she's right. been sitting with us, so she assumed that you <laughs> were of our same okay. IQ. Yeah. All right. Lori, doesn't protectionism drive up prices for American consumers? I mean, it's a good point. Um, but the fact is, the dollar right now is so weak. <laughs> the dollar's crap right now, so right. Right. we need a stronger dollar policy. Maybe we should fix our own house. That's all I'm that. saying. <laughs> uh, Robert, in Trump's defense, I think that what he was saying about the fact that he, his show was on, whatever, is that uh, his crappy show doesn't end until June, and because of the fairness doctrine, he can't declare his candidacy before then, or the show would have to be pulled off the air. It should be pulled off the air. I completely agree. <laughs> Thank you. We are in agreement. Uh, Greg, you said you'll take a businessman over a law, law professor. Okay, fine, but can it be a businessman who hasn't had three businesses go into bankruptcy and who doesn't favor government protections for businesses? It could be. Okay. I'm not saying no to that. That's all I I'm just saying know. no to all professors. We, ha we, we tried it once. We tried that. We tried our professor. It didn't right. work. What about the professor? Uh, Russell Johnson from Gilligan's yeah. Island. Yeah. Absolutely. White shirt, white pants, mm -hmm. nice belt. Can't beat him. Tasteful. Yep. Kind of wondered. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. kind of wondered. He never did hook up with Ginger or Marianne, did he? Didn't seem interested in the least. No, hung out with Gilligan a lot. Oh, though. well, who wouldn't? Yep. Strapping young man. Absolutely. Had abs before they were abs. Yep. Uh, John, I think Trump believes the birther crap that he's spouting. No, I think he's the granddad of Generation Jersey Shore. I really? think that he, yeah, absolutely, I, it, it's completely cynical, it's publicity, and he's so. drinking it up, absolutely not. I no. kind of think it's like this whole candidacy thing. I think it started out as a publicity thing and then turned into the real deal, and I think it's the same thing with the birther stuff. It started out as he just wanted attention, and now he's actually brainwashed himself. Well, okay, fine. Then if he is buying his own hype, then yeah. he is a monster. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. but, but Tucker makes, the, the point that Tucker makes is that I, I, I if all Trump is doing is asking a question, he's now stop. I know, I know. I'm just saying that. Look, I, 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 yeah, but you know what I'm saying is he can't lose. That's what I'm saying. I can't look at you. Yeah, yeah. I can't look at you either. Yes, <laughs> but you know what I mean. You can't lose by asking a simple question. He's lost my heart. No. Oh. <laughs> I'm kidding, I don't have a heart. I know. Uh, Assange loves him some lawsuits. Laura, you said Assange is a total hypocrite, and I basically agree, but I think there is an argument to be made, and it's mm -hmm. the argument Assange makes that private individuals are entitled to secrets that government employees maybe aren't. But isn't it, again, still hypocritical that he is the one he's trying to be, he has been the face of WikiLeaks, and there are all these little tidbits and gossipy items about politicians and diplomats, right. yet he's excused from all of that, that he gets to stand apart? But he would he would argue, and I'm not saying I fully agree with him, mm -hmm. but he, he would argue that he's not it, he's not a government. He's not responsible to the people. He can have his own secrets. He's just uh, that all individuals can have secrets. It's governments that shouldn't. Fair enough. I hear your mm -hmm. I, I hear your okay. point. But I mean, in, in a way, he's messing with the government, so he he might be kind of in that umbrella. Yeah, he's also a jerk, so it's hard <laughs> to defend him. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, by the way, the Guardian's David Lee, who's one of the people Assange keeps saying he's suing says Assange is full of crap. Uh, he says that there's no lawsuit whatsoever. Mm. Yeah. 
Uh, Greg Log, transgender identity. This was a fun one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tucker, you said the prose in this piece was so florid it pulses. Could you use more androcentric language? <laughs> no, and, I, and, I mean, and I'm not really. going to take that any farther than I already I mean, did. really. <laughs> I know, it's repulsive. Just disgusting. Yeah, it is. Uh, Robert, was it you who asked what two-spirited people were? I did, too. Oh, okay. All right. No, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> Your eyes scare me. I know. <laughs> I know. That's all I have to say. I know. Uh, sometimes, gender queer, I didn't know sometimes that. I will look in a mirror and I'm hypnotized. Mm. Yeah. And then, Scary. I start, then I just start crying. Uh, anyway, two spirited people refers to a belief in traditional Native American culture of the existence of three genders the male, the female, and the male, female, or, or two spirited. Oh. Bill Schultz. Yeah. It kind of is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, except that traditionally the two spirited person was uh, considered one who, who has received a gift from the creator. Not Which Bill I don't, Schultz. I don't think anyone would describe Bill as being a gift. However, he does buy all of his cigarettes from reservations. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. That is so eerie. Yeah. You really don't know if he has a gift from the creator. No one's ever seen it. No, that's uh, true. I don't go to the same gym. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, Bolivia wants you on treaty, giving Mother Earth the same rights as humans. Laura, you asked if there was something Buddhist about this. There isn't, but apparently in indigenous <laughs> Andean culture, the Earth deity known as Pachamama is the huh? center of all what, life. What's your mama? Pachamama, or okay. Pachamama, uh, is the center of all life, and humans are considered equal to all other living entities. So it kind of comes from that, I guess. Okay, interesting. Thanks yeah. for clarifying. Absolutely. Uh, by the way, I'm applying for the job of nature's ombudsman. Mm, I don't know. I don't think you have what it takes, Andy. I think I do. No, I don't think you do. I think I do. I've seen nature. Yeah. I've seen it on the TV. So what are you going to say? Hey, tree, I have yeah. a question for you. Yeah. No, the, uh, my understanding is that the trees would come to me with their complaints. Yes. And I would then relay them to my fellow humans. Mm, Sounds like a good gig. I have a feeling you'd be focusing completely on the whole feline population. It's the whole world possible. would become philocentric. It's entirely possible. Yes. God, what a great place that would be. Yeah, it really would. <laughs> I gotta go. Yeah, you should. Okay. All right, go away. Coming up, what's it like to be rich, famous, and good looking? We discuss Tucker Carlson's new book, I'm Awesome, You're a Loser, next. But first, what's the latest weapon in the war on pirates? Bet it's something, that's for sure. She painted his piggies pink, and now critics are making a stink. I speak of J. Crew president and creative director Jenna Lyons, another Jenna who appeared in a recent print ad with her son. Why are all women named Jenna these days? The ad shows off some of her favorite products. I'm getting outraged already, including the hot pink nail polish seen on her son's toenails. That's right. The caption for the ad reads, lucky for me, I ended up with a boy whose favorite color is pink. Toenail painting is mo way more fun in neon. Couldn't agree more, girlfriend. Anyway, since being emailed to customers last week, the ad has sparked debate. With some arguing that Jenna's indulg indulgence or encouragement could make life hard for the boy in the future, also in the future, as in right now, is our lightning round. Lightning round. <laughs> so uh, we started, we have this new thing called the uh, outrage meter It's like we work on it, it might not work. So we're just going to warn you, it might not work. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to go to the guests, and I'm going to say, hey, Tucker, how outraged are you by this story? She named her son Beckett. <laughs> I am very outraged. Very outraged? That. Shall we name? see how, what very outraged looks like? He said mildly, maybe not. There we <laughs> there go. go. <laughs> yeah, that's about how outraged you are? Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. I can tell this whole segment is going to go real smooth. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can't read this. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Robert, how outraged are you by this I, outrageous story? I am actually mildly outraged. What are you mildly outraged about? I think that it's ridiculous. It's like mom fooling around with their kid. Mm -hmm. I mean, if the kid was 28 and wearing a cop uniform, that'd be weird. <laughs> that'd be, that, I would be really outraged. My mother used to dress me I'd as... I'd be titillated, actually. <laughs> My mother used to dress me as a kid, all, a girl, 
like all the time, <laughs> and I'm fine. You are for real. Your mom really did I'm fine. Yeah, she did. She dressed me as a girl all the time. What'd your I mean, first dad say? My first dad was fine with it. The second dad had a problem, <laughs> and then the third dad really liked it too much. <laughs> I mean, I'm fine now, except I don't think that you are. I need to uh, wear uh, fake eyelashes to actually get aroused sexually. <laughs> the only way it works. Who doesn't? God, that's great. That John, e, uh, you must be outraged by mega this. Mega, ultra, super, mega, mega outraged yes. by yes. the yes. controversy surrounding this. It's yes. just a color. Pink. Yes. Salmon. Yes, I love salmon. I, it's delicious. No, not the fish, the color. <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's a non-controversy. <laughs> yeah. And it's the sort of country that drives me crazy because both both sides of the political spectrum are going crazy over this, mm -hmm. uh, you know. So. As a mom, yes. Okay. Can I share this little tidbit? Sure. Just today, my four-year-old daughter went to school in her Spider-Man shirt and her Chuck Taylors because she really? wants to be awesome. like Daddy. Ah. Because she thinks mommy looks like a clown in her TV makeup. So. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. So they're little, they're impressionable, and she's emulating her rock star dad. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's not really a rock star. I mean, I think he is, but he's a cool dude. You married to Spider Man? <laughs> Peter Parker. Mm. No, no. But you know so what I mean. So, she, so she's she's in, she's impressed by him and wants to copy yeah. him. So, so you mildly out, not outraged? M uh, mildly outraged that it's even an issue. Yeah, I am uh, not outraged. Not outraged at all, uh, with the exception of that it's a J. Crew catalog. That outrages, uh, yeah, that outrages me. There's nothing in there that you can actually use when you're alone. Pardon me? <laughs> what? Map that out for us, Craig. <laughs> Next topic. What? Next topic. No, Former no. Florida Governor Charlie Crist <laughs> has apologized to David Byrne. It's true. Everybody knows. To Try David Byrne. Uh, yeah, L.L. Bean's more like it. A rustic. Yeah, fly fishing. Where am I now? Oh, Charlie Crist has apologized to David Byrne via YouTube for using the 1985 song Road to Nowhere in a campaign ad last year. It's all part of a settlement with the Talking Heads frontman who sued Crist Upon learning he used the song without permission, you got to see this apology. I sincerely apologize to David Byrne for using his famous song and his unique voice in my campaign advertisement without his permission. I pledge that should there be any future election campaigns for me, I will respect and uphold the rights of artists and obtain permission or a license for the use of any copyrighted work. Thank you. Does he look like a cult leader who comes back from the future to tell you you've got 48 hours to kill these people or you will be like, you know. It is creepy. It is. It is just, it's like, like, he looks like he's ready to fly off the planet Zorbo. That's what Andy's going to look like in around 50 years. <laughs> Actually, that he, he does look exactly like. He's got the Andy, I'm disappointed in your answer expression right there. Hey, uh, Robert, since yes. you're already talking, which saves us time, what did you think of that apology? Was it heartfelt? It, it was awful. It, it, anytime you give an apology, mm -hmm. you should... You, at least, if you mean it, maybe memorize it. Yeah. A couple parts. He looked down like, uh, like Stevie Wonder reading an apology. Yeah. Just kept looking down. I mean, it's like he, he didn't mean it. It was awful. And the fact is, and, and I don't understand why the talking heads would be mad that somebody used their music for something in the last 15 years. <laughs> it's true. You should be they happy. Haven't, they, haven't done a decent, they haven't done a decent thing in 20 years. Nothing, yeah, nothing. Yeah, exactly. Well, you may ask yourself, that was it. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, it's true. Tucker, do you feel bad for Chris at all, that he was once uh, a, a powerful politician and now you know, groveling? Well, I think the operative line in the apology was, should I ever run for office again? <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. That should be a David Byrne song. He made a statement. <laughs> should I ever? Should not going to happen. No, it's not. Uh, Lori, like uh... Yes. So obviously forced into it, too. You yeah. could tell someone was behind him, kind of kicking him. You're almost through. Get through it. Yeah. Keep doing it. He was yeah. blinking SOS. Yeah, was, yeah, like yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everything's fine. At Inglewood Drive. <laughs> <laughs> Three, four, five. It didn't look like a captured U.S. soldier. Yeah, it was sad. It was very sad. John, uh, wouldn't it be funnier if David Byrne had come up with something other than an apology for him to do, like on YouTube, like a well, giant like, belly flop? I love the idea. <laughs> That's a great idea. I love the idea of YouTube apologies. Yeah. I think that this should be a thing. I think people should make apologies on YouTube, yeah. especially when it's uh, like court cases. I think that it should be, YouTube should become part of the judiciary. I like that idea. Thank you. I like that. We didn't get to the third topic, but maybe Lasers. We'll, try to, we'll try to get to it to the next uh, break, I hope. All right, time for a break. And remember to hear the new Red Eye podcast. There's a new one every day, and they're awesome. To catch them, go to foxnewsradio.com. You see the thing below there? Excuse me, Belch. <laughs> Click on Red Eye. Such a gentleman. I know. I had I had road meat. If you don't uh, if you don't uh, go there, you'll be missing out some really great conversations. Today, I talked about my no. fictional fantasies. It's like a dirty water dog. Yeah.
Love this story. The U.S. Navy recently released video of the successful first test of a futuristic high-energy laser gun mounted on the deck of a speeding cruiser. His name was Paul. The awesome <laughs> weapon set fire to a small boat from several miles away, and a Navy spokesman says this type of weapon could even be useful against planes, other targets on the shore. John, yes. why do you love this? <laughs> because during these dark days when Americans doubt the greatness of their country, there's a laser, and that is why we're awesome. That is true. Robert, what do you think of this? Isn't it make you feel good? This is on, we have a laser. Yeah. We have a laser. The only thing that's going to stink is that when the military gets something, you know, in around five years, the average loser on Gizmodo is going to have a laser. And then there's going to be the laser killer of New York. He's going to be standing there reading a the paper and someone's going to shoot through your brain. It, it's going to be Bill Schultz. Tucker, how long before we will have these implanted in our hands? Oh, yeah. I mean, this one goes to 11, let me just say. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. Totally impressive. They need better video for it, though. Yeah, they it's do. Just so, like, you know, a little barbecue fire coming off the motors, it, there ought to be, like, conflagration. <laughs> they got to exa exaggerate it. Put some uh, CGI in there and scare the yeah. hell out of everybody. Lori, do you want one? What do those things cost? Uh, I don't think we should get too used to them. I mean, with to all these talks of defense spending cuts and deficit issues and blah, blah, blah. Not until the Verizon okay. version comes in. Don't out. cut okay, the laser budget. Val yeah, exactly. Yeah. Can I make, a, can I make a, a, a semi serious point before I move on? This is our high speed rail. We keep talking about these trains to nowhere. Bye -bye. Screw that. Yeah. The money should be going to this stuff because it scares the crap out of everybody else and it works. <laughs> trains don't scare anybody. I'm just glad Val Kilmer and that nerd finally made the laser. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> wow. And on that note, we'll close things out with a post-game wrap-up from TV's Andy Levy. To see clips of recent shows, go to foxnews.com slash red eye. Back to TV's Andy Levy for the postgame wrap-up. Thanks. Uh, Robert, first of all, excellent Real Genius reference. Thank you, Real yep. Genius. Thank yep. you. Uh, where are you going to be performing? I'm going to be at the, uh, in Albany this weekend at the, a comedy club. <laughs> I forget the name of it. <laughs> nice. If you go have to you, my website, Robert Kelly Live. Have you, even book, have you even booked one yet, or are you just going up there and hoping? No, I'm just going to randomly go up, and hopefully there's right. a gig happening. Right. Hey, I swear to God. Good uh, luck with that. Hey, Andy, Andy, you, could yeah. you ask him why people with cats shouldn't have a Roomba? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no. Andy? No. Are you going to ask me? No. <laughs> because if your cat uh, poops, uh -huh. the Roomba will spread it like a thin veil of peanut right? butter all over the hardwood floor. <laughs> that happened to my friend. Okay. But why shouldn't a person with cat have a Roomba? Because of that. <laughs> <laughs> I get you. Sorry, sorry. My, my apologies. Tomato, tomato. Uh, hey, Tucker, that's a handsome tie. Uh, where'd you get that? You know, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> St. George's School in Newport, Rhode Island, one of the great schools in America. I have nothing to, I have nothing to promote. It. Okay. it is a great school, and they have good ties. All right. <laughs> Lori, you doing okay with being up this late? I, I know. This is exciting for me. I never get stale with kids and mm -hmm. the job. And the, mm -hmm. It's fun. fun Did time. you have a good time? It was fun. You guys are hilarious. Coming back? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. I'm invited anytime. Uh, Any absolutely. excuse to, you know, not Happy. have to deal with the... Lovely dumplings. FBN tomorrow. The FBN tomorrow at one. One o'clock. One Eastern. Stocks are miserable. Today. We'll see what happens tomorrow. President's talking, budgets, yep. spending cuts, exciting stuff, sexy right. stuff. Comedy Excellent. works. I'm at the Comedy yeah. Works. Okay. Okay. Comedy sure, Works Albany sure in Saratoga sure sure all weekend. Are, sure Friday you are. and Saturday. Sure you are. <laughs> hey Johnny, in the movie uh, Blade Runner, was Decker a replicant? Uh, here's the thing. <laughs> what? They're all replicants. That's your take. Everyone. And Blade Runner. It's a theory that I'm working on. Okay. <laughs> when I'm home, might want to flesh that. Might want to flesh that out a bit, my friend. And I was making Everyone's fun of the gender replicant. ladies. Everyone's yeah. a replicant. Right. Okay. You're All a right. replicant. I'd right. love to be one. I could live forever. Thank Bye, you. Andy. See you Bye. later. Bye. Lori, great job. John, great standing in for Billy. Robert Kelly, always a pleasure. Tucker Carlson, always delightful. And I do like that tie. Oh. I was wondering where you got it. That does it for me. I'm Greg Gutfeld, and my caller are going home. <laughs>